Welcome to Leading in AI with Greg Shove, a new series from Spark and Section, created to help New Zealand businesses confidently navigate the evolving world of AI. I'm Ben Moore, your host for this series. Joining me is Greg Shove, CEO of Section, an online business school helping professionals become AI literate and founder of Machine and Partners, an AI development lab building practical tools and workflows for businesses around the world. Greg is a world-class educator on everything in AI and business. Today, we're going to be covering the topic, where do you even begin with AI? Hi, Greg. Welcome. Thanks, Ben. I'm glad to be here. Appreciate it. So for our first question, there are a lot of companies that are just getting started now with their journeys in AI. So what would you recommend as the best first step for a business looking to get going with AI? Yeah, well, Ben, the first thing I'd say is you start with individuals. Like, listen, here's the good news about AI. I'm 63. I type with two fingers and I could figure out AI, right? So if I can, really any of us can. And so I think if, if you think about leading with AI, we got to start with the individuals who are the leaders. So uh, my, my advice to any company or organization is pick your leadership team that's going to be those who are leading this change and they've got to get their hands on AI. Really all of us have to get our hands on AI and pretty quickly I think. Uh, you know, the AI is not evolving. AI is moving at a very, very fast pace. So my first advice is get started yourself. Get ChatGPT or Microsoft Copilot or Google Gemini. I don't think it really matters. Most of these AI models are starting to have pretty similar capabilities today. So pick one. Again, GPT is probably the one everybody knows about. You know, that's sort of the Swiss army knife of, of consumer AI. And just get your hands on it yourself. And, and whether it's for work or for, for, you know, for life at home, right? Uh, you know, ask AI to help you with parenting questions or to, you know, uh, plan your next trip or to, you know, uh, choose, you know, choose the right TV to buy, whatever it is. Just get your hands on AI. Know how it works. Understand its limitations. Understand its strengths. And know how to have a conversation with your AI. Think about is you're going to borrow 30 points of IQ from the AI. All of us are when we use AI. Then what you think about is how does my team borrow 30 points of IQ? How does my organization borrow 30 points of IQ? So once you've got your hands on it yourself, the next step I think is pretty simple. Develop your point of view about AI and tell everybody else in your organization about that point of view. What I mean by that is it's more like a manifesto, not a rule book. Everybody does AI rules. I get it. You need AI rules inside of your organization. You need to tell employees what to do and what not to do, what data to share or not to share with the AI. So we do need to mitigate some risk and do that using some AI kind of rules and regulations. But that's not enough. And in fact, AI rules typically scare people from using AI which is sometimes the point, right? Which is why the rules are usually written by, you know, the, you know, the legal counsel or something like that, right? The governance committee. So if you have to do it, do it. I get it. But at the same time, more importantly, you've got to, as a leader, talk about what's your point of view about AI, that AI is not cheating, that AI is not cutting corners, that it's good to use AI. It's good to get your first draft from AI. Like we've really got to set the tone as leaders in terms of what we want the organization to think about AI and frankly not feel threatened by it, but view it as a way they can improve their productivity and you know, enhance the quality of their work and so on. So uh, get your hands on it first, build an AI manifesto as well as the rules and get that out in front of your organization fast. Great, yeah. And uh, so, you know, there's an empowering yourself with intention and then empowering those people in your organization by letting them know that intention, I guess, is, is to sum it up. Yeah, I think that's right. And then, of course, you got to give them access to AI. Yes. So, you know, deliver the manifesto, which is exactly what, what, you know, how you think about AI, how you want the organization to think about AI. And then you've got to give them, meaning pay for, what I would consider, you know, a good or great AI, which means likely the paid version of these AIs, they cost mostly around $20 US, 
uh, per month. I'm not sure what the prices are per month down in uh, New Zealand these days, but in that range, right? And I would probably pay for the Teams version of these products. The Teams version have more security and sort of more controls in terms of uh, you know using AI across your team. That's what we do at my company. We pay for Anthropic Claude for Teams. We pay for ChatGPT for Teams because there's a little bit more security and control. So you got to give people access to a great AI. Uh, make them clear about how you think about AI, lower the anxiety. Ben, anxiety is at all-time highs, at least in the U.S., and I'm sure to some extent in New Zealand around what is the impact of AI on our jobs, and none of us know. So I think the reality is, as a leader, again, you've got to say to people, we want you working with AI, we think, we think it's going to help, and we're not sure about the impact on our jobs. It, there is going to be some in both directions, right? We're going to create jobs because of AI. We're going to lose some jobs because of AI. My guess is we're going to end up sort of net positive. That's what's always happened in terms of digital disruption and innovation. You know, you know, we'll see. It's going to take a while to get that answer. But we've got to talk about these things and be upfront about it, in my opinion, in terms of uh, our workforces and our teams. But, you know, give them access to a great AI and get them started. Get them down, you know, down this journey of, of how to work Work with this co-intelligence. If you had, um, say, a hundred days to introduce AI into an organization, if you were a, a small, medium business leader or, or even larger, what would that roadmap look like? How do you start to understand at what points you need to do what next step? Yeah, I'll tell you what not to do first, Ben. Don't do this. Don't stand up at the all hands meeting or on Zoom at the team meeting and say, hey, I love AI. You know, you should all be using AI. That's what I see a lot, is le a lot of leaders doing. D don't do that. Or, or if you're going to do that, you've got to back it up with a 100-day plan. Right? You've got to back it up. And frankly, it should really be a 12-month plan. In the first 100 days, do what I already talked about. Get your hands on it. So if you're going to walk around telling everybody to use AI, you better be using AI. And you better, be, you better have your favorite use cases. So when someone says to you, oh, you use AI? Well, tell me what, how you use AI. And you can't go, uh, you know, or I use it to you know, plan my travel if, you know, at work. I don't use it. You can't, you can't be one of those leaders. So have your own favorite use cases. Have your AI, AI manifesto. Deploy a good AI to everybody in the organization. Then here's what you do next. You celebrate and share the learnings from AI every week. So this sounds crazy, but we do AI shout outs at our company. We started about 18 months ago. So, you know, we've always had human shout outs, right? Shout out to, to great team members who, you know, made a great contribution this week at our, at our all hands meetings. And we do our all hands on Zoom because we're a, 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 we are a distributed company, a remote company. So we always had human shout outs. Now, 18 months ago, we started using AI shout outs and we still do them today. We had, a, we had an all hands meeting today and people did AI shout outs. It sounds kind of crazy, and I don't think AI should be on the org chart. AIs aren't human. You know, we work alongside them. They are digital teammates. But it's really important to acknowledge when we work with AI, what's working and what's not working. So I'd start something like an AI shout out. I'd start something like an AI channel in your Microsoft Teams or Slack or whatever, whatever sort of company chat or team chat you use. I'd start a channel to funnel all your questions and conversations about AI into a single place so everybody in the team knows where to go to get kind of get those answers. I'd recognize and reward people for sharing great AI use cases. We have clients that, you know, run contests. We have clients that have sort of given a trip away to someone who's got the best AI use case and they fly them to Silicon Valley so to hang out with AI companies. Whatever it might be, you know, it, it just could, it could be, a t you know, it could be a voucher for a nice dinner, uh, you know, for an employee. For those people really showing the way in terms of how to use, how to use AI. I'd also do something called audit workflows. So I would, I would pick your most language intensive teams in the organization, marketing, software engineering, sales, customer service. Those are typically language intensive functions. And, it, and of course, in addition to the, the legal team, but I'd start somewhere else. I'd probably start with marketing and sales. And I'd go in and really kind of work with those teams to audit their workflows, meaning where are the workflows that we think if we introduce AI, we could get some you know, productivity gains, some efficiency gains, and or maybe just offload some drudge work to AI. And, and, and maybe it doesn't make people that much more productive, but it makes them a little bit happier. And we do hear a lot of that in initial rollouts of AI for, for specific use cases. 
What we hear from employees is, ah, listen, you know, that was great. It saved me only an hour a week, but I couldn't stand doing that task. You know, I could stand doing that analysis. I couldn't stand, you know, summarizing that document or whatever it might be. And AI's kind of jumped in and, and, and it's doing that for us and just kind of, you know, it helps, right? It makes your day go a little bit faster. So find those use cases by doing workflow audits. At 100 days, you should be starting to hear feedback about what's working and what's not. So I'd take a pause at that 100-day mark and then kind of lay out the rest of your uh, you know, nine-month, 10-month roadmap. Yeah, I, I, for me, I've always said those moments where you're going, oh, this is so annoying, this is so boring, that's the kind of moment you go, well, could I get AI to do some of this for me? And you've got to have those moments, don't you? I, at my company, and this is what I tell every executive, it makes no sense to me that you would do the draft or the V1 of any document or any problem with a solution or any plan or any memo, it makes no sense to me why that V1 would not come from AI first. That strikes me as dumb, meaning I think humans are much better served getting a V1 from AI and then we as humans make that V1 great you know, as the V2, right? We, we add our experience, we are, add our judgment, we add our creativity, our magic our human magic to something that, that, that AI generates as a V1. I think it's going to be faster to a better outcome. So we're very clear with, with the team at our company. You know, we want your V1s generated by AI, and we want you to improve on those and make them unique and special by adding kind of your expertise and knowledge. 